Hello. Yes, now I am here in the Wareham Channel, as I said earlier on, and I was a little bit sceptical when I came here this afternoon because you don't know what you're going to see, especially when it comes to live animals. But check this out. Live white-tailed eagle for you, ladies and gentlemen. This is C-466, the female that we introduced you to yesterday, and she's been sat there all afternoon. Well, pretty much, but I was so excited to get a glimpse of her, and even from where I am on the boat, I can see her with my naked eye. Just goes to show how big she is, considering she's over 300 metres away. But look at that, isn't she spectacular? Now, within half an hour of arriving here, we saw some action, the only action we've seen from her this afternoon. So she took off from that spit and she was immediately mobbed by gulls. Now she's heading over to an island that's full of gulls and there was a survey done in May, there's about 278 Mediterranean gulls, about 3,500 black-headed gulls as well. And you can see her there in a cloud of gulls. No situation that any eagle wants to be in, but one she finds herself in because she's looking for a reward. Look, she lands down there, she gets a bit pestered by the gulls again, decides to fly up, but give it another go and look in her talons really quickly. You've got to be really eagle-eyed to see this. But we think she managed to grab a very young chick. Really hard to see because the chick is probably incredibly small. And as she flies off, she's chased away by those gulls. And of course, the gulls are very protected of their chicks. They don't want an eagle coming in to snatch them. They've worked really hard to produce those chicks, but if a white-tailed eagle gets its eyes on one, well, I'm afraid there's not that much that you can do about it. So she flew back to her spit where she landed again. She ate her snack and we've been enjoying views of her ever since. What a magnificent bird she is. I'm so excited that we got white-tailed eagle live for you. Oh, that's made my spring watch. That really genuinely has. Now, of course, white-tailed eagles were reintroduced to the Isle of Wight, but they've certainly made their home around here. They like that spit in particular, and there's very good reason for that. This habitat is really fantastic for them. So uh, we, this is a natural harbour. It's incredibly big. It's about 36 square kilometres. And on the northern side of the shore, it's quite urban. You've got pool over there. But on the southern and western areas, including the Isle of Purbeck Peninsula, surrounding islands like uh, Brown Sea Island, it is much quieter for them. And it's much shallower as well. It's only, on average, less than about 0 0.5 metres. And it's full of fish like grey mullet and therefore full of birds. And that's exactly what these eagles are after. Obviously, an area that's full of prey is going to immediately attract more large, bigger predator birds just like this. Now, we've sent our wildlife teams out to go and have a look at them in action, flying around, and uh, we've seen some fantastic things. The reintroduction project has been incredibly successful. It's been from the Forestry England and also from the wonderful Roy Dennis Wildlife Foundation. Now, they've been able to get a keen eye into these animals' lives by monitoring them very, very closely. Now, Steve Egerton Reed is from Forestry England, and he's been studying them since they've been released here. And I'm quite envious of him. I've been watching this white-tailed eagle for the last couple of hours, but he spent over 5,000 hours, 5,000 hours watching, and I'm so excited about that. Very jealous of him. Uh, but he's very particularly interested in their diets, and I happen to have some data that he's collected there. Now, typically with their diets, we're getting it from pellets and poo, which isn't actually as accurate, it's a bit biased, but we're watching them with the eye like Steve has, you get some really good data. So look at this. So about 21% fish makes up a white-tailed eagle's diet. I was a bit surprised by that. I thought that was a bit low. We've got 1% crustacean, 4% mollusk, 36% birds, 26% uh, mammals, and question mark 12%, something we don't know. And I was really surprised, especially by the mollusk. Is it your typical garden snail or could it be something a little bit bigger? Well, photographers looking around and out the bay have been keeping a close eye on these birds and seeing exactly what they've been up to. And look here, Ainsley Bennett got this fantastic photograph of one taking a common cuttlefish. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. Now, I happen to have a cuttlefish bone here. And when these cuttlefish spawn, they sadly die. That means they'll float to the surface or they'll beach themselves. And then it's easy pickings for a white-tailed eagle. But what's really interesting about Steve's data is actually how their diet changes as they get older. So for example, we've got all these bars here which indicate the years that they have been out in the wild since their re-release into this area. So one year after release, two year after release and so on. 
Now, the mammals is particularly interesting in yellow. So the number of mammals they eat when they first release is quite a lot, but that declines as they get older. And the number of fish in pink seems to increase. And that's largely because the birds become a lot more specialised. They've become more skilled in finding those fish and preying on them. So it's fascinating to see that change in behaviour over time. Now, we do have a white-tailed eagle live. I mean, let's go to it one last time to see her. G466. What a beautiful, beautiful bird she is. I'm so pleased we managed to bring her live to you all. It's made my day. I hope it's made yours too. Very, very exciting. Now, I've been absolutely loving that.